Father's Day is just around the corner, so it's a good thing that this video is sponsored by Ridge Wallet, who are offering up to 40% off their range of wallets just in time to get your dad something nice. To save big and make your dad a happy man, click the link below or stick around to the end of the video to learn more. Alright, I don't want to draw this one out. Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun. It totally rules and you should absolutely buy it. Thank you for watching. All right, fine, I will review it properly. Firstly though, I'll let you know that I'm now running an ultra wide setup on one of my PCs. So expect some of my videos to be presented in ultra wide, some of them not. Depending on which screen or orientation you're viewing on, you may see some black bars at the top and bottom. Let me know if that's a big deal for you. I don't know, I'm just trying it out. Anyway, Warhammer 40K Bolt Gun is the latest shooter to release within the burgeoning subgenre we refer to as the boomer shooter. It's burgeoning so fast that people are starting to take issue with the boomer shooter label, being like, eh, actually boomers are born in the 50s and 60s and no 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 old school shooter boomstick go boom boomer shooter done it will feel positively wasteful to not use that phrase so who made bolt gun well it's published by focus interactive under their indie label and it's developed by auroc digital the last thing this team put out was a beer brewing simulator which personally i think is the perfect warm-up round for a boomer shooter because i would wager large sums of money that the venn diagram representing the target audiences of these two games is indeed a perfect circle bolt gun derives its name from the bolter the iconic 40k weapon that has armed countless fodder within the emperor's vast and inexhaustible war machine it's the perfect title for a game like this it'd be like if doom was actually called shotgun or halo was called assault rifle both of those names are upgrades by the way Naming your game after a gun puts up a pretty clear flag to all that they shouldn't be expecting deep, nuanced storytelling or emotionally wrought characters or elaborate puzzles. You are a weapon and you are there to mete out the Emperor's justice to any and all who deserve it and you are going to have a damn good time while doing it. One thing I didn't mention is that Bolt Gun is actually a sequel to the 2011 Space Marine. No one really knew that until a recent trailer dropped which created a narrative link between the two games. And now that it's there, people are pumped because Bolt Gun is a sort of warm up round for Space Marine 2, which is scheduled to drop sometime later this year. Because here in Bolt Gun, you again feel the armored plodding shoes of an Adeptes Astartes, a Space Marine, the tip of the Emperor's bloodthirsty spear. Purpose built for war and with an unlimited capacity for it, the Space Marines occupy a hallowed place within the 40k universe for their incomparable might. What better character to headline your boomer shooter, right? I was thinking about that a lot while playing, actually. The fit between this character archetype and this style of game. The humanity has essentially been bred out of Space Marines through their transfiguration. They don't really think or feel like normal humans do. They just fight and that's it. And that means that you can already do away with a lot of the narrative stuff that might otherwise be a requirement in other games. The fact that they're basically unkillable creates the perfect excuse to let the power fantasy run wild. You will slay hundreds and thousands of chaos forces here, sustaining huge amounts of damage as you do so, and all of that impossible carnage and impossible resilience becomes instantly more possible when you know it's a space marine doing it. What about progression trees, new abilities, metroidvania unlocks, etc? This game doesn't have any of that shit. You know why? Because space marines are already fucking perfect. The emperor made them. You think you know better than the emperor? Sounds like some serious heresy to me. The absence of all that stuff is a little novel and refreshing. Like even Doom has upgrades and Doom Eternal has all those cutscenes. Does it need that stuff? Probably not. Halo Infinite certainly has it. Do you want your grapple cooldown to be reduced by 40%? Level up enough and that convenience can be yours. I get why this stuff exists, by the way. It's fine. It's neither here nor there, but surely at least some of it exists because developers worry that if it doesn't exist, that people will think their game is too simple, not sophisticated enough, not deep enough, that it doesn't feel AAA enough. Well, the beauty of Bolt Gun and other boomer shooters, really, is that they don't have to care about any of that stuff. And if they don't want to add a level system, a skill tree, and an upgrade node that increases your chain damage by 5%, then it's fine. They won't add it, and the game will still rule despite their absence. So all of that creates the baseline for this Space Marine fantasy, right? Your job is to kill, you are unkillable, there's no other faff or nonsense getting in the way of any of that. On top of that, Auroc clearly love the source material and they know how to sell it. Like the Space Marine is a big armored hulk, so when he walks around he sounds like this. When he falls great distances, you can hear the thud of his armor as he lands. Then there are the taunts. Pressing T at any time lets you hear for yourself just how much your space marine is enjoying his mission, or just how devoted he is to the Emperor. I am the edge of his blade. Whilst I draw breath, I stand. Whilst I stand, I fight. Whilst I fight, I prevail. 
When you idle, your guy will take out some light reading material. I don't know what it is, but it is clearly some holy scripture that is intended to denote his piety. That is pretty badass, not gonna lie. I love a man that reads. I also love that the armor pickups you find are called contempt. That is awesome. As though the more contempt you have for your enemies, the more resilient you are to their attacks. That is a perfect example of the way that 40K takes language and redeploys it to conjure up new, more violent and more militant imagery. It's one of the things I love about it. It's awesome. It's those little things that really make you believe the people who made this gave a shit and they knew how to deliver fan service in a way that feels pitch perfect in this retro inspired format. It's not just the little things though, it's bigger things like the range of weaponry from the basic bolter and shotgun up to heavy bolters and Volkite calibers. The range of enemies is expansive from low level cultists all the way up to chaos marines and lords of change. It has a storyline which is pretty thrifty, but it's there if you want to follow it, involving the Adeptus Mechanicus and their experiments which have gone awry again. I mean, overall, there's like eight to 10 hours of gameplay here, all of it introducing you to new weapons, new enemy types, and new locations at a good cadence. If you're a Warhammer 40K fan, then there's actually a lot of 40K stuff to see, and you're seeing it through this retro shooter lens. Like what does a Chaos Exterminator or a Flamer Demon look like when it's in pixel art? Well, here's a game that not only lets you see them in their high contrast, low res glory, but also lets you shoot them in the face. So is Bolt Gun fun? Hell yeah, dude, it's a good time. I really think this team has a solid understanding of what makes for a great shooter. They've nailed the smoothness of the controls, weapons feel great to use, and they all have their own distinct identity. Enemy behavior is predictable in the ways you'd want it to be in a retro shooter setting like this. The health and ammo economy is generously tuned to make you feel powerful and in command without making the game feel too easy. It's just a well put together package that I had a really fun time playing through. Every time I'd come back to it, I'd get this nice feeling when I loaded up a level and regained control of my character. Like, ah oh, yeah, it's good to be back. Very few shooters elicit that, I think, but Bolkan pulls it off. There's a lot of secret sauce that goes into what I've just described though. Movement, for example. It feels good because it's got the right elements in place to give you full control over your character at all times. The sprint feels quick, there's a dash to get you out of trouble or help you clear long jumps. You can mantle up ledges, which is great because I feel like when games don't offer that these days, it can feel a little frustrating. Those fundamentals are all in place, but the best movement ability is actually your chain sword. Holding down the melee button when you're in range of an enemy will actually slow the game down and highlight a target. Releasing the melee button will dash you to that enemy so you can begin carving them like a Christmas turkey. Incidentally, if the enemy has a lot of health, you have to spam that melee key when you arrive at the target to keep grinding. It is very, very satisfying, trust me. This one movement ability immediately opens up the game in a big way. It's the meat hook from Shotgun Eternal, I mean Doom Eternal. It's the ability to move across the battlefield in an instant, using your foes as grapple points. It's strategic, it raises the skill ceiling, and it's just fucking fun. Like, you're a space marine, this heavily armored demigod of the Imperium, and you are essentially teleporting around the battlefield, creating new piles of pixelated goop whenever you do so. Weapons all feel fantastic to use as well. The Bolter is probably my favorite actually, just a solid workhorse at almost any range. It's the Assault Rifle from Bungie's 2001 classic, Assault Rifle. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll stop making that joke now. But seriously, this is just a great weapon to use and it will likely be your go-to as well due to its versatility. The shotgun is nice, but perhaps not as satisfying as it could be. The Heavy Bolter, man, listen to this weapon. How awesome does that sound? This weapon is strong for sure, but it's not that strong. It's not like it melts enemies, but when you use it, it feels so good because of the sound design and the fact that you don't ever have to reload it. You just shoot it until it runs out of bullets or the enemy runs out of health. I will say though that while each weapon has its own identity, I don't think enemy design pushes you to make use of those identities enough. Doom Eternal really opened our eyes to a shooter format that necessitated weapon swapping, almost as though each enemy was a unique problem that required a specific weapon to solve. Some found that a little overbearing at times, especially when paired with the more restrictive ammo economy, but tuning aside, it was a great system that really deepened combat and made it more engaging moment to moment. Bolt Gun doesn't have anything like that. Every enemy can be taken down by every weapon. There isn't much efficiency to be squeezed out of using one weapon type over another weapon type when you're engaging a certain type of enemy. It's about what you want to use rather than what you should or must be using. That's liberating and it's also in keeping with that old school design formula. 
but anyone who's looking for a shooter that combines more modern design with the retro aesthetic probably won't find it here. Same goes for level design, actually. The level design here is very old school. It's a lot of hallways peppered with enemies leading into big arena style spaces where the lights go down and they don't come back up again until everything is dead. Levels are always about finding a key or often multiple keys. These keys are either out in plain sight and you need to kill a bunch of enemies to get it or they're hidden away in some pokey corner of the level. And when you do chance upon it, you'll wonder how you got so lucky as to find it. Levels have plenty of secrets hidden in obscure locations, including some behind seemingly ordinary walls, forcing you to do that glorious face grind where you just slide across walls to see if any of them might be activatable. More than anything else though, these levels are really big and really labyrinthine. You will absolutely get hella lost in these levels, spending huge amounts of time wandering back and forth to see where to go next. There is no in-game map and no mini-map to help navigate. You are on your own. If you are not used to that, you might hate this because who wants to run around in big circles looking for some hidden corridor that you might have missed the first 12 times you walk past it? But if this gameplay loop is familiar to you, this becomes a funny little dialogue between you and the developer where they're essentially taunting you to see how much they can purposefully confuse you and you're responding by showing how much resolve you have to push through it. Unless that resolve is in great supply, there's a good chance you may not see Bolt Gun all the way through to the end. I don't want to give you the impression that Bolt Gun's level design is strictly retro inspired though. It does have set pieces like elevator sequences, which are setups for ambushes, or jumping puzzles that demand you use your chainsaw to navigate them, or this weird hall of portals that's this obscure puzzle. It's also a very well paced level design, far better than we got back in the day, knowing when to change up the size and lay out of space so that things always feel fresh. But even with these more modern finishings, Bolt Gun's levels really do feel very old school and are probably the most boomer shooter aspect of this apart from its aesthetic and the lack of ADS. And by the way, just to be super clear, me pointing out the lack of progression upgrades or the lack of force weapon swapping or the distinctly retro inspired level design is not a criticism. I actually really like all these choices, not only because I grew up playing these old school shooters, so I'm kind of used to this stuff, but also because the boomer shooter subgenre is having the success it's having because of the fact that it's not chasing these more contemporary design trends. These games really are harkening back to the good old days, and that's going to work for some, but it's not going to work for others. You may look at Bolt Gun and wonder, is there a modern shooter hiding under this retro aesthetic? The answer is no, there is a retro shooter underneath the retro aesthetic. If you are down for that, then I think you're going to love Bolt Gun. But if you're not, then yeah, I mean, you're not. So when it comes to the technical side of things, we shouldn't have too much to worry about when it comes to a game like this. If a developer can't get a game that looks like this running at a decent frame rate, then I don't know what to tell you. Luckily, Bolt Gun is beautifully optimized. Obviously, it runs fine at 1440p ultra wide on my RTX 4090. I'd be very worried if it didn't. I also tested this on the Steam Deck and it also ran superbly there at native 720p. You're looking at around 60 to 80 frames a second on deck. Very smooth, no stuttering. An eminently playable experience, perfect for the Steam Deck actually, or the new ASUS ROG Ally, which I'm currently testing at the moment, and yep, it ran fine there too. I had zero crashes while playing, no gameplay bugs, no audio glitches, no glitchy enemy AI, nothing. It was just a really solid, really well-polished experience. Obviously, your mileage may vary, but I have nothing but positive things to say about the technical side of this game. I do want to give a special shout out to the sound design, which I just think is so fantastic. I've spoken already about how good certain weapons sound, but the fact is this whole game just sounds excellent. Meaty, crunchy audio that feels pulled from that classic era, but without the tinniness or digitization you can hear if you go back and listen to that old stuff, this team just did a fantastic job building an authentic soundscape and also an informative one as positional audio does a huge amount of heavy lifting as you find yourself surrounded by the forces of darkness. So just to start wrapping this up, Bolt Gun is the first Warhammer game I played since I reviewed Dark Tide last year. And I have to say that it makes for a pretty fascinating companion piece. 
Both of them are set in the 40k universe, both of them involve killing Chaos Spawn, though admittedly different variations of them. They share a number of weapons like bolters and plasma guns and chainsaws and more. They're steeped in the iconography of the Imperium and in particular the Adeptus Mechanicus, and they're ultimately power fantasies. They're not strategy games or narrative-led RPGs or even strategic shooters. They're about cleaving a path through hordes of darkness in the Emperor's name. There are a lot of differences between these two games, of course, but their similarities are far stronger, and playing Bolt Gun felt like I was playing one of those demakes of Dark Tide that we see these days, like the PS1 version of Cyberpunk or Bloodborne or whatever, where a game's barest essentials are retained and all of them are squeezed into this old school visual format. You know, I actually went back and played Dark Tide recently, and it was uh, a bit of a bummer, unfortunately. I checked out the in-game store and there was still like no cosmetics worth buying except for the ones you have to pay cash for. During a mission, I had some bugs including a recurring audio glitch. When the mission ended, I got a weapon that was a significant downgrade versus the one I was currently using. It was not a great time and it still feels as though there's a significant amount of work to be put in before that game is actually delivering on the promise it made to people when we first saw it. And it was in stark contrast to what I had just experienced with Bolt Gun, which obviously is a far less ambitious title, but I think it's also far more successful if you ask me. It hits every objective it sets for itself, and you're done with it in around 10 hours, but you walk away really happy and you absolutely feel like you got your $20 worth. The Warhammer franchise is a patchy one when it comes to video games, but Bolt Gun is one of the success stories. One of the great success stories, I think, and I really hope that Space Marine 2 delivers in much the same way that Bolt Gun has, and I hope that Dark Tide eventually does as well, because goddamn if Dark Tide isn't one of the most awesome looking and feeling shooters ever made. Anyway, that's my review of Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun. As I said at the top, it totally rules and you should absolutely buy it. Father's Day is nearly here, folks, so what's it gonna be? More socks, more jocks, more whiskey, an Adam Driver body pillow? Wait, what? How did that get on the list? Here's an idea. How about you upgrade your dad's wallet to something newer, sleeker, better, and without that suspicious circular ring pressed into the leather, a reminder of his glory years. Enter Ridge Wallet. It's the wallet evolved. In fact, I can personally attest to, as I've been using Ridge Wallet for many years, well before they sponsored the channel, Ridge Wallet holds all your essential cards plus your cash using the money strap or money clip, and they take up a fraction of the space that the old bulky leather wallets did. I really couldn't imagine going back to one of those, to be honest. In addition to that, Ridge Wallets protect you from scammers with RFID protection, plus they come in a range of ultra durable materials, including titanium. Of course, there's a huge selection of colors and styles available from the popular matte black to red to navy to tons and tons more, really. They've actually just launched a number of new styles like their base camp orange and this one, Damascus. I've been rocking the North Shore style for over a year now and I never thought I'd switch off it, but as soon as I cracked open the Damascus, I was like, whoa, this is nice. I've now switched over both my wallet and my key case to the Damascus, and they are my daily drivers. Ridge's range will surprise and delight, allowing you to select the perfect combination of material, color, and design that is just right for you or your dad. Because that is the focus right now, getting dad something that he would like, but also a little bit surprising. Chances are he's never heard of Ridge or even seen how slim a wallet can be. Presents that people don't even know they want or need are always the best type, and Ridge wallets absolutely fall into that category. Best of all, Ridge is going hard in the old discount category. Right now they're running a huge sale across their site where you can get up to 40% off their range of wallets, key cases, and more. 40% is the highest discount I have ever seen Ridge offer. So if you want to grab something for dad or you just want to spoil yourself, now is absolutely the time to do it. To get that discount, be sure to click the link below or visit ridge.com forward slash skill up. You need to click that link or visit ridge.com forward slash skill up. Otherwise, you won't be getting those discounts at checkout. Hope your old man has a happy Father's Day. Thanks, Ridge, for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it.